Welcome back, my book lovers. It feels so good to be back on my podcast. That's right, I'm back. After so many people asking me where a book binger has been, I've decided to plug in my microphone, open up my books, and start talking to y'all again. I have missed you guys. I took a needed break from social media and from not reading as many books, and it really proved to be beneficial for me. I was able to take a step back and decide what I wanted to read and when I wanted to read it and how fast I wanted to read it. Sometimes I felt like I needed to be pushing out books so fast for you guys, but taking this step back made me ponder and think about really enjoying the books. So without further ado, I am bringing back a book binger. (laughs) And Eliza actually had been one of the many people to convince me to come back to book binging. So with her help, I've decided to bring you guys a new episode this week. And without further ado, I'm going to let her introduce it to you guys. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, fellow book lovers. My name is Eliza, and I'm going to be Shelby's special guest on this week's episode of A Book Binger. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the book and the author to y'all. So The Uglies is a 2005 science fiction novel by Scott Westerfield. It is set in a future post-scarcity dystopian world in which everyone is considered an ugly, but then turned pretty by extreme cosmetic surgery when they reach the age of 16. It tells the story of teenager Tally Youngblood who rebels against society's enforced conformity after her friends Shay and David show her the downsides of becoming a pretty. Written for young adults, Uglies deals with themes of change, both emotional and physical. The book is the first installment in what was originally a trilogy, but turned into the Ugly series, which also includes the book Pretty Specials and Extras. I cannot wait to share my thoughts with y'all. Thank you, Eliza, for introducing this week's topic. You're welcome. I was happy to do it. Uh, I'm excited. Um, Like I said before, Eliza and I, we got the Pretty Series book set for Christmas. And we haven't really talked too much about it since we've gotten them. Um, Eliza, I know you haven't read all of them quite yet. That's correct, right? Yes, I've only read up to the Pretties. Okay, (laughs) so you've read two books. Two books. Two books. I'm on the third. Okay, awesome. Well, and I don't really want to talk too much about like any spoilers or anything like that because I do want most of our readers to go and at least read the uglies. I think they're a good book for not just young adults, but for adults as well. Um, like I mentioned before as well, I read them when I was Eliza's age. And I thought they were great. They are that young adult series. But just reading them now as an adult, too, it was, I found a lot of things that I didn't catch beforehand that were interesting. So before we dive into all of this, I just want to know what your perspective on just the first two books have been. They're definitely shocking. They, I don't know, I was not expecting it to be so in-depth and like, I don't know. It's just, it was very interesting for me to see the perspective of this weird dystopian world and like the politics that go into it. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was interesting. It was a good, good read. Yeah. So with the politics at being your age, what did you find was like interesting or disturbing or like kind of went over your head I found it very disturbing that everybody was just kind of okay with it. Yeah. That nobody really decided to question it until 
Tally Youngblood came along. Uh huh. That was the most disturbing part for me. It was that the entire society was just like, yeah, sure, this works. Yeah. So, so kind of explain to our readers what you are talking about. What what is everybody not really paying attention to? So when they go for their extreme cosmetic surgery, everybody seems to be a little bit different, a little bit altered, and nobody questions it. Like their personalities change, they do different things, and their whole world just kind of goes into a haze, and nobody questions it. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting, too, to bring it up in that this 16 year old, she becomes this heroine. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the case with a lot of dystopian books is that there is always somebody who has to break that chain. Right. Yeah. Whether whether it's a 16 year old girl or whether it's an 18 year old boy or even sometimes it could be later down the roll road, it's an older adult, but those are really, really rare to find. Most of the time, it's usually a teenager. Yeah, most of the time, it's like this young antagonist. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really true. And I've thought about that as we've read these books on why do you think that they would have I mean, obviously, it's a young adult series, so young adult is typically the ages between 14 and 21, but why do you think it's, like, easier for them to write a teenager or a young adult to be the one to break that chain? Well, teenagers, I think, tend to be more curious in nature and tend to, you know, want to change things rather than adults who just kind of go with the ebbs and flows of life yeah no I think that's super true and I thought that as well as another point too is they're a little bit more innocent and so that curiosity brings a whole level of I I'm not sure if courage is the right word but definitely they don't have a lot of fear as say an adult would have yeah adults can't be brave but (laughs) you know they have more to lose too like normally adults have families and good jobs and stuff like that so they have more to lose than a 16 year old girl yeah exactly but not saying that tally was the first one to notice that there was something different right no yeah she i don't think she was no no i mean she wasn't no she really wasn't but maybe one of the first ones to care on a large scale Mm-hmm. Well, and I also think, though, because her friends, um, as we talked about in that blurb that Eliza shared, um, her friend Shay actually brought Tally into this kind of like secret society. Yeah. And Tally wanted to stay into it. But um, the reason she got into it was pretty much kind of be a tattletale. She yeah. she wanted to be a pretty, she wanted to be this beautiful, well sought out, popular girl. And in order to get that, she kind of had to go undercover. So not only was she kind of brought into it accidentally, but she was there kind of on a, a secret mission. Yeah. She was kind of like the spy kid for the city. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, but putting that aside as well, one of the biggest things that I saw with this book, reading it as an adult again, was how much looks are so important to people. It's yeah, it's definitely a topic that they focus pretty heavily on, which and it's sort of a topic that needed to be focused heavily on in this book for sure. I, I appreciated it. Yeah. And the whole point of it is when, so, I mean, just on the surface, obviously the books are called Uglies and Pretties, Specials and Extras. So they're grouped in these categories and it's kind of sad that the author is so good at portraying these different people because up until the age of 16, everyone is called an ugly. That's how they, like, yeah. they just yeah. go around pointing out each other's flaws. 
Yeah, and their nicknames were based off of their flaws, too, actually. Like, their biggest feature that was noticeably just not right. (laughs) Yes. And so I can't remember exactly what Tally's was. I think it was about her nose. Um, Yeah, I think it was her her nose or her eyes yeah something like that I think I think it was her nose I think they call her nosy they might have like and then, that yeah it was something like that and then somebody was squinty I don't remember if it was Shay yeah that but someone was squinty I remember that yeah so it's just interesting to read like that everyone was I guess kind of you know, they accepted it because they knew that it was going to change. So it probably made things a little bit lighter when they were mocking each other. Oh, your eyes are too close together. Oh, your hair is stringy. Oh, you've got big cheeks, like things like that. (laughs) Yeah. Whereas, yeah. Whereas in our society today, if somebody was to tell us that we would be so upset. Yeah. You would, you would probably want to smack them, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my reaction. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, just thinking about being in middle school and high school, that's where all of that really comes out to play. And that's where you are in your time of life, Eliza. Yeah. And so reading these stories, like, how did that make you feel in relation to your reality? Um, I don't know. I definitely felt some truth behind it. Like people do get on to you about those types of things and I thought it was really interesting to see how they just kind of accepted it and like nobody really gave it a second thought or anything like that and I almost thought that's how it should be in like our today's world you shouldn't really care about it that much like you should just move on from it and you know so that kind of is what resonated with me is don't think too much about it I mean for them it was because it was going to change but If you could relate it back to today's society, I think it would be just don't care that much. Just accept it. Move on. Yeah. Well, and a big part of, I think, why they were able to accept it so easily is, like I said, they were going to be getting surgery at 16. But what I found interesting this time around was that the surgery, it wasn't just like they got to, I mean, they did get to pick some aspects of their body that they wanted to change and how they wanted to change it. But for the most part, everybody kind of had the same style. Yeah. 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 The same feature. So making these robots, I felt, you know, like they all had the same skin. They all eyes, nose, like it was all perfect and it was like atomically asymmetrically perfect because their bigger eyes would make them more understanding and more approachable and their skin would be clean so it would put off the effect that they were clean as well without any kind of like disease and I thought that was so interesting I thought that too, especially since I thought it was interesting they made everybody basically look like they could be related, especially yeah. because in today's world, they are always talking about how everybody is afraid of differences. So I thought it was interesting how these city officials just kind of went ahead and got rid of the differences entirely. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And so kind of bringing it again into our reality, because who doesn't do that? Who doesn't? try to find some connection with a book into our reality um (laughs) I mean yeah I definitely do (laughs) that's the whole purpose of reading exactly the world exactly I know we try to escape the world but we can't have that disconnect completely there's always a part of us that is bringing it into our reality yeah always (laughs) so I really like the point that you brought out that everybody today is afraid of differences but I also think that everybody is also trying to express their differences and with that there with Tally being you know this heroine and trying to break that I can see that also connecting to our world today of she's trying to 
tell people this isn't right. This isn't okay. We all need to be who we are, you know? Yeah. She's almost kind of like the advocate for it. The advocate. Yeah. yeah. Like the politician that's trying to break the corruption and manipulation, stuff like that. (laughs) Look at you. (laughs) I hear dad talk a lot. (laughs) Yeah, I think I think that's um, a really heavy topic, especially if you're not looking at the surface of these series um, and you're really diving into uh, the main concerns that Scott Westerfeld is talking about. I mean, he's got a long list going of um, bodily imperfections of even like social cues and of uh, different politics, running a city of um, even bodily harm. Like <laughs> I know that's a big one for you in one of the books is, yeah, is that there, there is a lot of um, self harming going on. And with this giant surgery, they were trying to get rid of that. And so there's a lot of, pros and cons to the surgery, mostly cons. But I think what started out with the surgery is they were trying to get rid of a lot of things like um, anemia and uh, cutting and of um, even like sexual harm. And there was just so many things that they were trying to get rid of by making our bodies more perfect. Yeah, and that's something they did talk about in, um, I want to say it was the pretties. They went pretty heavily into that as to why they did it. Yeah. To like kind of, lo- not turn off entirely, but to lower your human instinct for violence and rage and all those, you know, emotions that they would consider ugly. Yeah, yeah. And then I think with anybody who has the upper hand on something, they got power hungry. That, yeah, that's, that's true. There's always an element of, you know, wanting, once you get something, you want more of it. And so I think with the surgery, that was also kind of something they tried to turn off yeah. was your need for power and like the need to control or whatever. Yeah. So I think for sure that these series, um, there's some deeper meaning, which in any book there should be. But there is a lot of sensitive topics that can be read um, on a deeper level, deeper, deeper <laughs> level <laughs> in these books. Um, for me, it was definitely uh, the the body image and having people recognize your deepest flaws and wanting to change that. I remember being in middle school and high school and worrying so much about how my hair looked and what I was wearing and things like that. And so this was a really good, um, you know, this was a really good book to remember those feelings on, but also to look back and think if I didn't worry about it too much, I could have been a little bit happier and just living the life that I wanted to live and being the person that I was. Well, the thing for me that I focus on most heavily, it wasn't really the looks. It was all their little, their clicks and everything they wanted to, they had this huge desire to fit in and be with their friends and, yeah. you know, just go with the ebbs and flows of life like everybody else. And I really liked how Tally kind of broke free from that, how she was like trying, like you said, trying to be her own person, trying to show people a new way of life that was really what resonated with me it kind of told me like it's okay to not follow along with society I love that I think that's awesome and that's what I love about these books too is that there's always something that somebody else will take away from it and there's always something that we can relate to each other there's something that we can escape the world from and I I think that Scott Westerfeld, he did a really good job. And it was interesting because when I was researching it a little bit more, uh, he intended it to be a trilogy. But after getting so much hype about it, he created that last book, Extras. And I thought that was really interesting because I didn't realize that. And I think they all tie in 
really well together. I've read a little bit of the special, and it does tie in pretty nicely with the other two books. And I'm really excited to read the extras. I have no idea what to expect. I do have to warn you guys that if you do read the uglies, there is a big cliffhanger at the end. And there is a big cliffhanger on every book. So you'll want to keep reading. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's how it always is. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of A Book Binger. Eliza was such a great special guest and able to talk about the dystopian world of Scott Westerfield, The Uglies. Please don't forget to subscribe and to follow us um, Instagram, Twitter. Also check out our website where you can see the summaries of all the episodes, what's going to come next, and keep up with us. Thank you so much and so happy to be back. Please give me any kind of recommendations you would like to. You can send me voice recordings here on Anchor. Send me a message on Instagram. I am happy to receive those. And if you'd like to come on the podcast as well, please just let me know. I love having guests. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time.